Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing, and welcome back to the railroad for another Nick's review where I review O scale rolling stock, motive power, and accessories. So today on the tracks, we actually have two Lionel 2026 prairie style locomotives from the golden era of Lionel, the post war era. Now, both these engines are considered post war from 1948 49 on the right we have a variation a 2026 and on the left side we actually have a variation b slash c from the production run of 1951 to 1953. if you'd like to see the full in-depth review of this 48 49 variation here that link will be down in the description of this video now today we're going to concentrate and talk about the 2026 on the left now, as you guys can see that this one actually has a little bit more of a flashy design, added parts here and there, uh, a little bit more decorative in some places. Compared to our locomotive on the left, it's actually missing a ton of wheel detail. You know, the hoops are missing compared to this locomotive here. The um, 264 wheel arrangement saved a little bit of money as well, but they also don't have that fancy hot box stamped in there. Our grab iron is actually stamped on the shell going all the way back compared to this one's actually a wire grab iron. Also other moving parts in here that they um, did not include on uh, this model that does have it and this one does not. Now I have heard that these engines on the left were actually stripped down due to the Korean War effort. So any metal that they you know, could conserve and use towards the war effort was highly recommended and most likely mandated at the time. Compared to this engine was made during the peacetime after World War II, this one is a product of a wartime effort. Here's the other side of the locomotives with the 48-49 variation on my right and the 51-53 to variation on the left. Now something very interesting, they did include air compressors or air pumps on the 51-53. Right here it's actually a dual, uh, dual compressor setup, which is pretty cool. This engine does not have that, but it still has the air cylinder right here, or air tank, and they continue to use that on the 51-53 mold. So the tooling is a little bit different. Now here's a great look at our trailing trucks. Here is that hot box detail. It looks amazing on these compared to those just two trailing trucks just hanging out. They added like a spoke wheel and then like a flange wheel. It's just kind of weird how they did that. But both of these are still considered classic Lionel toy trains. This is the 1951-53 um, Solo on the tracks now. And we're gonna go over some features before we get into running this beautiful locomotive. So up front we have an operating headlight with lens, an operating smoke unit, and three position E units. So we get that forward, neutral, and reverse. This engine actually runs really smooth. It's just like clockwork. Now I did have to open up this locomotive before running it because someone added liquid smoke in here while it was still accepting pellet smoke and it created a chalk mess in there. It was everywhere. It was awful. So you guys can see that right here of what that looked like. It was a mess but it takes about five minutes to clean out and then you just solder in a new smoke uh, resistor or burner. So it's working great now with liquid smoke, just like new. I do like some of the detail they put in here in the frame, even though it's not as ornate as the earlier variation. But there's tons of things to look at in the mold. Also, it runs, you can see just all of our moving parts, runs really smooth. And opening up this engine was kind of a pain because they actually drive a pin through the shell right here. So you have to be careful not to crack your, uh, it almost looks like your ash pan or the firebox flange right here. You don't want to crack that off because you won't be able to mount the motor in there. There is a mounting screw up top, just like the earlier variation, but that pin really holds in that motor and everything else is kind of screwed in place. Here's a front and side view of the locomotive. And I'm actually happy to see that it has both of the green marker lamps up top of the marker gems. Sometimes those are impossible to find on some of these older toy trains. Now this engine was also picked up at the recent uh, July Cootstown train meet, July 2021. 
for only $35. So these engines can be found uh, very inexpensively. And after replacing the smoke unit, okay, that's another, let's just say $10. So for $45, I got a brand new toy train. It also came with the tender, but there are no markings on it. I cannot identify this tender at this moment, but it seems like it's in later plastic post-war tender. All right, you guys can hear the transformer humming away. So here we go. Let's do a little bit of a dry run here. Here's reverse. There's that beautiful headlight. And there's forward. Nice and smooth. So today our 2026 will be hauling around these beautiful 2600 series Williams CNO passenger cars, starting with our baggage car. We have a double door baggage car here. 2605 coach. 2604 coach. And 2607 observation coach. I love this car. In the back, they kind of added some fringe up here in the mold. And I also love these old time silhouettes. It brings us back. And I believe these are part of the uh, classic series from Williams. So they kind of copy some of the Lionel classic cars uh, and a little bit more modern flair, uh, just like some of their classic series locomotives as well. You can see there's people in there drinking, having a good time. Um, looks like this guy sitting by himself. Almost reminds me of uh, Alfred Hitchcock sitting in there <laughs> all by himself. And the baggage car is lighted, which is pretty cool. Sometimes uh, train manufacturers do not put a light inside the baggage car. This is actually one of my favorite passenger car sets to run with some of my E units, F units, and also my beautiful B&O Hudson, which you guys will definitely see in the channel. All right, so our 1951-53 variation is on the outer track, pulling these beautiful passenger cars. Then on our inner track, we have the older variation, 48-49, pulling an entire set of Chessy Systems, CNO, and CSX freight cars that are really light so you should be able to fly around these tracks. So here we go, all aboard.
going to conclude this Knicks review of this Lionel post-war 2026 variation 1951 through 1953. I think it's a great locomotive. If you guys ever find one, definitely pick it up. I haven't had any uh, major issues with it as of, you know, a couple weeks. <laughs> so far, everything's running great on this thing other than the uh, smoke unit replacement. You know, that's the only thing I'd do to really get this thing rolling again. But all the mechanics were perfect. Sounds nice and quiet. It runs really smooth. If you guys had a great time today watching the 2026 and, you know, hearing me talk about it, make sure you give the video a like and add a comment down there. It really helps out the channel. And if you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell for all so you don't miss reviews and content just like this. Until next time, everyone, happy railroading. See ya.